children are dismissed to children's church. You don't have a Bible, you can share it from all your town, whichever one you have. I'll just talk with you this morning. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. Thank God for giving us another opportunity to be in the Word. I'm not going to be very lengthy this morning. Corinthians chapter 1 verse 28. Let's start at verse 27. If you need a Bible, please raise your hand. We would like you to follow along in your word with us. We need a Bible right over here at the uh, I mean, Brother Dan, our sister, right here in the purple. Raise your hand again, my dear. Thank you, Jesus. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. A key portion of the text is found there in verse 28. And the base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. This morning I want to talk to you about what's your testimony. Subtopic in spite of yourself. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. And we thank you this morning for your word. Pray even now for your anointing. The anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. Without you, Lord God, we can do nothing but with you can all, do all things. Let this word be a word that challenges us, Lord God, that stirs us up and gives us instruction. I rebuke the enemy even right now. Satan and I rebuke you. Mind everything that you hide them that would exalt itself. And I lose the love of God in Jesus' name. We're going to turn to Acts chapter 1 because I want to talk to you. I want to lay down some foundation this morning. As I talk to you from the topic of what's your testimony. Because God has been dealing with us. And pushing us and giving us a mindset to continue the mission. He's given us some powerful word over the past week. I a guest preacher from Georgia laid out a broad stroke picture of things that are going on worldwide, globally. And so we have to ask ourselves, what is our role? What is our part? Acts chapter 8, verse 1. I'm gonna, we're going to read through a few verses of text this morning. I want to talk about something that God showed me about us. <coughs> that I think will help us be able to fulfill the mission that God has for us. Chapter 8, verse 1, says that Saul was consenting unto his death. He's talking about Stephen. And at that time, there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And the devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. And as Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they were scattered abroad and went everywhere, preaching in the word. This is a story of the beginning of the life of Saul before he becomes Paul, and how he treated the saints. Paul goes on later, and we're going to look at the text, and gives his testimony about the kind of person that he was. He wasn't a nice person. When you look at the text here, it says that Saul 
uh, made havoc. The word havoc means uh, wide destruction. He was dragging men and women and bringing them to jail because he thought he was doing the right thing. He was doing it contrary to what God accepted. Many of us in our lives, we have done things that were completely contrary to God because we didn't know the Lord. Go to Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And Saul, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, he went to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Saul was continually going everywhere, slaughtering, killing, murdering Christians, whether they were men or women. And he had a very callous and hard heart. Chapter 26 in Acts. He drug him into prison. He was so fierce that he wasn't satisfied with just killing the Christians in Jerusalem, but he wanted to go to the nearby cities and do it also. Because they were scattered everywhere. And he was determined to stop this thing called Christianity. In Acts chapter 26, verse 10 and 11, Saul, who is now Paul, is giving his testimony. And he starts in verse 9, he says, that I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And Many of the saints that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. I was like, good, get them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and deny the Lord. And being exceeding mad, I was very angry at the, the fact that they thought that they were doing right and I believed that they were doing wrong. When being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. I went from city to city. I chased them everywhere because I did not like the fact that I felt like they were dishonoring Jehovah. He gives this testimony and he gives it for the purpose that he understood that he had gone astray. And that it was really the grace of God that brought him back. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I told you we're going to do some reading this morning. I want to lay this down. Because sometimes the enemy tries to make us feel bad. But we can only feel bad when we don't accept who we were. Sometimes people get saved and they start walking with God and they forget who they were. But Paul is writing to the Christian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. He says, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called, I'm not even, uh, I shouldn't even be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. I, I can't even accept the fact that God called me an apostle. I don't deserve it, because I was such a murderer. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. This grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I, I, give, I read these stories because I want you to think for a second, what's your testimony? I began to sit on the couch early last night, early in the morning, two, three in the morning. And God began to talk to me about my testimony. And he said, your testimony, you really, it, it began early in your life. The testimony of doing wrong. 
By five years old, I was still in. I mean, really still. I was going in stores at five. Who goes in stores at five and steals? I was going into strawberry patches and still in strawberries. By the time I was in elementary school, I was still in bicycles. Who goes down the neighborhood and steals all the neighbor's bikes? By junior high, I had a whole warehouse storage full of other people's bikes. By 17, I was smoking marijuana, doing mescaline. By 19, I was doing speed and acid. By the time I turned 20, I was involved in witchcraft, and I was saying diabolical things and blaspheming and saying things like, that God is not great, but the devil is great. By the time I turned 26 and 27 years old, I was doing cocaine, smoking weed, drinking Hennessy, Cavassier. By the age of 29, I was a crackhead. But then came Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's something about really understanding your testimony. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. God said, this is the scripture for the saints today. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things here, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor, patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have someone against thee, because your service has become mechanical. He says, nevertheless, even though you're going to church and, and you're going to Bible study and you're an usher and you're, and you're singing on the praise team, service has become mechanical. You've lost your first love. And he goes on in verse 5, he says, remember therefore whence thou art fallen and repent. It becomes the mindset that God wants us to have is to remember how far down we came before we found Jesus. Yes. When I think about my testimony, I think about all the things that I went through and how far down the devil brought me before I ever even came to know the Lord. Yes. And I believe that every person that gets saved, that walks with God, has to stop and remember that we weren't just riding on the mountaintop all the time. Yes. That through our life, we did many things that were contrary to God. Yes. Some things that we did ignorantly. We did not understand or know whether or not it was right or wrong, but we did it anyhow because we were following the crowd. Yes. But life has a way of bringing you down. Sometimes you can walk in pride and you can think you're all that, but then when the devil gets through with you, you find yourself with low self-esteem. You find yourself with a, a murderous spirit. You find yourself looking or thinking about committing suicide. You find yourself not liking people, not being uh, loving to anybody, being hateful because the devil is just bringing you down. But something happens to you when the Lord saves you. There's, the Lord gets down inside your spirit and he stirs you up and all of a sudden you feel this joy and this excitement and you want to tell everybody about Jesus. Can I get a witness in the house? Can you remember what happened when the Lord saved you and delivered you and let you know that he loves you and that he cares about you and that he's saving you not because of yourself but in spite of yourself? Felt like jumping. Felt like running. Yes. Told your mama, I got saved today. Yeah. Told your friends, 
that used to hang out with you, that used to do drugs with you, tell them, I don't do that no more. I got saved today. They start walking around with a smile on your face, and you felt the joy of the Lord down on the inside. But after a while, when time passes by, we have a tendency to forget from whence we have fallen. We begin to look down on other people that don't have it like we have it. We begin to judge folks that aren't saved and because they might be living in a way that's contrary to God. We, we try to you know, turn our, our eyes and despise them and look down at them as if somehow we're better than them when really we were just like them. We forget the struggles of life, how hard it is to make it when you don't have Jesus. We take for granted our walk of God and the, and the covering of God and the blessings of God and the anointing of God. We take it for granted and we begin to walk in pride. We begin to walk in arrogance and we forget from which we have fallen. God was talking to me. He wasn't just talking to me. He was showing me visually how bad I was. He was letting me get a glimpse of a reminder of how diabolical people's lives are that don't have Jesus. Yeah. That I'm not the only one that was in that state before I met the Lord. Yeah, right. That many of the saints that are sitting in the house of God have forgotten how they used to be whoremongers. Yeah. Yeah. They used to sleep around. They used to steal from people and lie to their mama and lie to their friends. Sometimes we forget that we're really nothing upside the head with an army dragging you out shooting those that resist kicking people when they're down stepping on their necks dragging you by your legs giving you in a headlock dragging you out throwing you in prison kicking you when they throw you in there and then realize that he was wrong I wonder how many nights he repented. I wonder how many times he had to keep going back to the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was doing wrong, I'm sorry. And the Lord's saying, listen, I love you with an everlasting love. My grace is sufficient. I love you and I forgive you and I'm going to use you anyhow. things of the world. Those that are down to nothing, I use them. Those that understand that if the Lord hadn't delivered them, they wouldn't have been delivered. Those are the ones that I use. I use the despised. He's not talking about people that are despised by people. He's talking about the fact that God despises sin. When God looked at our lives of sin, he despised the sin. But he loved us. He says, I use those that I despised. And I take them and I turn their life around. And I strengthen them from the inside out. I make them brand new. God says, what's your testimony? What have you been through? Have you slowed down long enough to think about it? Do you remember? The attitude you had? This is what the Lord is saying to us. He said, listen, you need to do your first works. What, what was the first works? The first works was that, that spirit of excitement. That spirit of wanting to share with everybody you know that there's a God that loves you. 
wanted to reach out to those that are hurting and those that are down and let them know I know a man named Jesus and he told me all about me he showed me everything about me and he's able to deliver you he's able to bring you out he's able to raise you up he's able to strengthen you when you look at the text in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 he says you see your calling brethren that's how he actually starts it out. He says, you see your calling. You see the fact that the Lord has called you when you really aren't anything. You see the fact that the Lord has chose you and translated you out of the kingdom of darkness and placed you in the kingdom of his dear son. He says, I have called you and I've chosen you and I'm using you. Why? So that God can be glorified. Look at this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, and not many mighty, and not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, has God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Yes. He says, you're nothing. Our lives is like a vapor. But if you're going to glory, glory in the fact that God has chosen you. Glory in the fact that God has empowered you. Glory in the fact that God has made you a witness to things that other people have not seen. God has called you out of darkness for a purpose so he can show his power to your life. So that you can walk above sin, that you can walk above depression, so you can walk above anger, so you can walk above defeat. The Lord has chosen you and called you, and even though you were despised, God says, I am going to use you. Because when people see you, they're going to see the glory of God. What are you talking about, preacher? When you see the stars, the Bible says when you see the stars, you see the glory of God. When you see the moon, you see the glory of God. When you see creation, you see the glory of God. What is he talking about? When you look at the stars, you think, man, what a wonder. What a marvel. How could a God create something like that? The Lord said that when people see you, and they remember how you used to be, and what God's going to do with you to turn your life around, they're going to see the glory of God. They're going to know that you didn't do this yourself. It was the power of God that did it. You couldn't make yourself into what you are right now. It was the grace of God that made you who I am. When people saw Paul, they couldn't believe it. Isn't he a murderer? He says, I used to be a murderer. But by the grace of God, I am what I am right now. I am saved. I'm sanctified. And I'm preaching the gospel. When they see you, they won't see God's glory. Look at your neighbor and tell them, do you see the glory? Do you see what God is doing with me? Do you recognize how I walk in the love of God now? Do you understand that your car is safe out there now? <laughs> Your purses, they're safe around me now. Do you see the clue? In spite of ourselves, God has chosen you. It's God's choice as to who He wants to use. He told the apostles, Listen, I've chosen you, you haven't chosen me. You weren't even thinking about me, but I, I made a decision I'm going to choose you because there's some things I want to do with you. Yep. Some areas in your life that I want to strengthen. There's some things in your life I want to strip off and there's yes. some things that I want to change. And I don't want you to get beside yourself to where you begin to look at others and judge them because you need to remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. When you even think for a moment that you want to judge somebody else, you need to stop for a second and remember.
I'm never going to forget my testimony. Yes. In the world, they tell you to forget so you can move on. That's not what the Lord says. He says we overcome by the word of our testimony. We overcome pride by constantly reminding ourselves that we are who we are because of God. Yeah. We overcome anger because we're able to remember that God delivered us from that. We overcome every attack of the enemy because we remember that we used to be down but God brought us out and now we're on the Lord's side. We're not even on that team anymore. What's your testimony? What you been through? Who'd you hurt? Who hurt you to, to where now you're mad at him? Who won't you forgive? Who won't you help? When's the last time you prayed? You remember the first words. Morning, noon, and night. Go to work. Lunchtime. Walking around the building. Oh, I'm just doing a prayer walk. Hallelujah. Night time, dinner time. Who's going to bless the food? Not you, because you take about 45 minutes to bless <laughs> You remember the first words. You know how you were when you first got saved. He said, I like that when you were like that. Yes. I I'm not happy. The fact that you rush to get dressed and you run out the house, you don't even think to pray. And a prayer walk, forget it, it's too hot. <laughs> And your blessings. Bless this food in Jesus' name. <laughs> Before the people close their eyes, you're already eating it. <laughs> Did you pray? I said in Jesus' name, you need to shut up. <laughs> the fire, the passion, the fervency, the excitement.
and that he didn't judge anybody. He didn't look down on anybody, but he always remembered where God brought him from. And even in my funeral, I don't care who gets up and says, someone should get up and say, he used to be a crackhead. He once was blind. But when God got through with him, so that everyone that's sitting there listening can understand that no matter what you used to be, when God gets through with you, you shall be the glory of God. This morning, some of you are struggling. You're struggling with yourself. You're struggling trying to understand, Lord, I'm this and now I'm that. God said, listen, stop it. I know what you are. I know who you are. I take the base things of the world and I raise them up. I take those things that are despised by people and despised by me and I use you and make you great. You don't have to try to be anything. All you have to do is be saved. Oh. Look at the neighbor and I'm saved. I'm saved. See, some people can't even say it because they don't really know what it means. Listen, it means that you're really living for God. Uh, and being saved doesn't mean I go to church. Because lots of people go to church and they ain't saved. And I'm not trying to put you down or anything like that. I'm trying to help you understand what God is trying to get out of us. Because that's a work to do. And when a person surrenders their life to God and recognizes, listen, it's not really about me. If, you know, I am what I am because the Lord made me what I am. Then you're more willing to go out and do what God has called you to do to help somebody else's life. You say it? Brother, you say it? You say it. The Bible way. Jesus told Nicodemus, who was a, a ruler, he came to Jesus at nighttime, but he probably worked in the daytime. You know how it is, you gotta pay the bills. They had to pay bills back then too, just so you know. We didn't just start paying bills. And he says, I perceive you're a man that come from God, because nobody can do these kind of miracles that you do. I've never seen this stuff in my whole life. Jesus says, good, you came to the right place. Listen, I have a word for you. He said, a man must be born again or he cannot even see the kingdom of God. You can't even see me move and operate without being born again. And Nicodemus was a little confused. He was like, I don't quite understand. I've already been born once. How do I get born a second time? Do I go back into my mother's womb? Because he's thinking carnally, but he's, he's really sincere. Jesus says, hold up, I need to make it very clear to you. You have to be born of water and spirit, or you can't even enter into this thing. You can't even be a part of the kingdom of God, the power of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. He says, if you, if you come in through the door, he says, then you'll have eternal life. He says, you must be born again of water and spirit. It's, it hasn't changed. The way in is the same. And the method's the same. And God doesn't care about the past because the past is gone. The past is only something for you to remember. But the future's bright. He says, any man that would come to me, I'll give you rest. The Holy Ghost is that rest, that the power of God, the Spirit of God is that rest that allows you to cease from the roaring and the struggle that's in your flesh because of sin. You know, when I give my testimony about being on drugs and spending $700 a day, it sounds simplistic. But how many of you can raise $700 every day? You know the difficulty and raising $700 a day? Do you know the struggle that goes on the inside and in the mind when you're trying to stop and you can't? Do you know the roaring and the rage? 
raging and the anger. When you see other people free and you're not. The Lord says, you come to me. I'll change you. The power of the Holy Ghost is unlike anything you've ever experienced in your whole life. Having the Spirit of God and living from God is unlike anything that you've ever experienced in your life. There are many people that get the Holy Ghost, but they don't really live for God. They don't get down and, and get in there and just pray until the Holy Ghost just pours down. They don't take the chance to lay their hands on a sick person dying of cancer and just believe God that God's going to heal them and ever see that person come back with the report that the doctor couldn't find no cancer. All things, honey. All things. For anybody. We stop believing God for our loved ones that are bound. We stop believing God for our loved ones that have gone astray, that have said, listen, I'm throwing in the towel. We stop believing God for those that seem like they're never going to stop sinning. You got to stop acting like that and understand that God can save anybody. of the Lord. By his power, he pulls on your heart. 
and begins to show you, listen, I can change that. Oh, I can change that too. Oh, that ain't no problem. I can change that too. He said, you must be born of water and spirit. What does it mean to be born of the spirit? It means to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you'll speak in tongues as the spirit of God gives utterance. I worried about 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, you know, everybody don't speak, have the gift of tongues. I'm not talking about the gift of tongues. I'm talking about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's two different things. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues. And I dare anybody to challenge God. Say, so, well, I don't believe it. Well, try it. Put them to the test. Raise your hands. Hallelujah. Let the Lord show you that he's able. Man doesn't give you the Holy Ghost. The Lord does. And man can't stop you. So I don't care how many people say you can't get it. Listen, God will go prove them wrong. And he'll give it to you. What a wonderful God. Yes. This morning, this is our altar. The enemy is trying to make people feel hurt about something that God has long past forgiven. And I just want to pray with you this morning. I want the ministers to pray with you. And at the same time, maybe you're like, I just want to get baptized today. You can come down right now. Or you might say, I've been baptized, but I don't know about this Holy Ghost thing. I, I need the Holy Ghost. Come down right now. May God give you the Holy Ghost. You'll speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives others. You can come right now. Today is your day. As I'm talking to you, you can come right now. Come on and close your eyes for a moment. Because sometimes people want to come. They feel a little intimidated. I don't want you to be intimidated this morning. I want you to be excited about such a great opportunity to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. You can come right now. While everyone's eyes are closed, you can come right now. Come and get the Holy Ghost. Come on, the Lord is calling. You want the Holy Ghost? Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Break through. Come on, break through. Push through and come get it. Come get it. If you've never spoken to come, come get the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. Everybody's eyes are closed. Come on. Come on and let go. Come on, come on. Let the Lord pull on your heart. You've never been baptized. Come on, come on. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Who would want to pass up this opportunity this morning? Sometimes the person says, I want it. But then when it's the time to get it, they won't come get it to get baptized. Amen. I want it, I want it, I want it, but it's the time right now. Come on, come on. Amen. If you just want prayer, come up, Pastor Mike's going to pray for you. Before we close, if you just want prayer, come up to me. See, I heard the word today, Lord. I'm telling you, the Lord has been dealing with my heart, and I just, just pray for me to be strengthened. Come right now. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Right 